pretty. Let's make sure we're live here. Okay, and we are live to go. All right, so today on the Boo Boo Verse, we are going to install Unreal Engine for Linux. So Unreal Engine is a game engine, uh, which is basically a simulation creation machine, if you want to think of it that way. Specifically, we're going to be looking at Unreal Engine 5, which is the latest version of um, Unreal Engine's game engine. These have always been used for things like video games and maybe even movies sometimes, but more and more these are finding use as simulations for things like robotics and deep learning and computer vision. Um, other tools in this vein are things like Unity. Uh, Unity is also another famous game engine. Here actually Google gives us a couple other ones that are similar, Godot. Uh, Unity is more lightweight than Unreal Engine, um, but it's also a little bit less powerful. It doesn't have kind of the built-in systems. It's not as fast. Uh, I've actually spent the majority of my development in game engines within Unity, and now I kind of want to try out Unreal Engine and see see what it's like to work with that. So the plan for this live stream is to hopefully get it installed and running on Ubuntu. Um, so we're running Ubuntu 20, Focal Fossa. The problem is that this guide is for Ubuntu 22.04. They do say it works for Ubuntu 20, so we're gonna see if we can get it to work, but there is a non-zero chance that we start this stream only to realize that we can't do it. Uh, if we manage to get through this installation, we will go through these uh, tutorials here. Ray Wonderlick, which is a, kind of like a game engine, game dev tutorial series and we'll go ahead and, and see if we can get through one of these simple tutorials here that shows you all the different parts. So I went ahead and pre-downloaded the Unreal Engine uh, installers here. Um, we do have, oh, if I can spell NVIDIA, we do have a eight gigabyte graphics card. Um, we have more than 60 gigabytes of free disk space and we don't have Ubuntu 22, but I have a feeling we might be able to get past that. So let's go ahead and start here. Powerful game engine, right? Triple A game developers, high fidelity graphics and realistic physics. Okay, you need 20. Okay, download. You can unzip the zip to any directory you'd like. Okay, so he's gonna directory. I don't like the space. Let's do Unreal Engine five, no spaces. Let's cd into that and then let's uh, unzip dash d, go into downloads. Let's try the Linux Unreal Engine. Uh, Let's, let's get crazy here. Let's try the 5.1. So 
So we're trying an unsupported, the latest one with the most unsupported version, but I think it should be interesting. Okay, and we're gonna unzip that there. Okay, so this isn't even the right. I don't really use unzip. I prefer tar. Okay, this is also not working. Let's try this unzip again. Why was this not working? Extract files into xdir. Ah, okay, so you unzip dash d and you say where you want to extract it to and then you give it the actual Thing. Okay. So now it looks like we're actually unzipping it. Okay, this will take a while. Well, that sucks. Okay, now that the archive is extracted, navigate to their directory and in engine binaries Linux. Go there. Okay. So we can open up a new tab here. Um, we're going to go into engine binaries. Linux. Okay, and we're going to search here for Unreal Editor. So there's a ton of stuff here. Okay. This is still inflating. So let's go ahead and keep reading this guide while that happens. So we run the Unreal Editor. You may be alerted to update your NVIDIA drivers. Okay. Uh, and then you should get Unreal Editor. Okay. This is still going. Uh, why don't we kind of start sneak peeking here into the Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. So whenever they're just kind of talking about more games, this is kind of the two cool technologies that they have, Nanite and Lumen. Nanite is a uh, level of detail, so Nanite level of detail, right? So. Normally when you have 3D assets, there's kind of what's called the level of detail. So this has low level of detail, this is high level of detail, and when stuff is far away from the camera, it's not worth rendering it at a very high uh, level of detail. You wanna have it at a low level of detail. So what the Nanite system does is it'll render things at different levels of detail depending on how far or how close they are to the camera. So these are all the kind of systems that make Unreal Engine more appealing to some people compared to Unity because there's all these kind of like powerful built-in uh, tools and functionalities. Let's see where we're at with that. Okay, that's still going. Uh, MetaHuman, so they do have realistic avatars too. Okay. Using the blueprints visual scripting, you can create entire games without writing one line of code. That's cool, but also we want to write code, right? <laughs> That's one of our, uh, okay. Blueprint visual scripting. It's kind of like these node editors that you might have seen in Blender. Node based interface. Used to define. Oh, oh, classes. Okay, so you're basically. Yeah, so. C is kind of one of the hurdles to Unreal Engine. Unity uses C, -sharp and Unreal uses C. So. It's a lot easier to write in C-sharp compared to C++. C++ takes longer. You need 
to have kind of a stronger programming background. So uh, basic scripting, building blueprints, anatomy of a blueprint, blueprint tutorials, blueprint editor, cheat sheet. Let's look at the cheat sheet. Sometimes these tell you the most. Uh, covers the most commonly used actions. Okay, so you can add a component, add event, math, networking, utilities. Okay, event begin. So you can, there's probably some event based system in Unreal Engine, right? Kind of triggers, and then you can say, when this event happens, do something specific, such as maybe printing this string hello. Uh, add to selection, different kind of shortcuts here. Uh, event begin, navigate to graph, child graph. I don't exactly know what a graph means here. Okay, child graph maybe is just a collection of nodes. Uh, event begin, it sets a float, and then maybe you can get that float from somewhere. Node actions, get float, set float. Pin actions, creation shortcuts. Actually, here we see some of the, we have a for each loop, uh, do n, do once. So that's kind of cool. Okay. Oh, it looks like this finished here. Okay, so let's go here. Let's go back to our guide and let's see if we can run it. All right, let's pray here. Unreal Editor. Okay, it's doing a lot of stuff here. We're gonna have to look through these logs. Oh. All right, we have known issues with graphic driver. The installed has known issues with you. Please install the latest or the recommended driver versions. Actually, yeah, we have a 1080. Uh, installed is 510, recommended 515. No, we're crazy. Let's try to do it with just the older version. So we do have the Unreal Engine, it's just uh, on my other monitor here. Let's see if we can get it on this main monitor. I don't think we can. Hmm. Okay guys, so it's off screen, so you can't see it, but the it's sitting here saying compiling shaders. Why don't we look at these logs, see if there's anything in here. Let's make this a little bit smaller. Big outputs, different profilers for different devices. Oh, look at that, Oculus Quest, Oculus Quest 2, HoloLens, so you have the VR stuff built in. Active Device Profile Linux Editor. Okay, so it knows it's in Linux. Uh, memory usage. So actually, why don't we do that? Unreal Editor. It's using a lot of CPU, not a lot of memory. Okay. Exit out of that. Property host, shader clock. Warning, known issues with this graphics driver. Yeah, so this is the graphics driver that complaint that we saw earlier. Okay.
number of monitors too. Look at that, it knows our monitors. It's pretty clever. It's doing kind of like a system-wide scan of, of the hardware and making sure that it's appropriate with that. Look at this, knows, there you go, that's the specs of the computer, Ubuntu 24, AMD Ryzen 12 core processor, uh, GTX 1080 with NVIDIA driver 510. Oh, okay, here we have some some modules that it loaded here. I think some of these are maybe interesting to look at. Dev blueprints, networking. All right, here we go, boom, we have it. All right, guys, look at that. It worked, magically. Texture pool, now 1,000 megabytes. Uh, oh, wait up, what's this? Warning, failed to find category definition named SIM. Okay. So we have Unreal Project Browser here, perfect. We have different types of projects. We have first person, third person, top down, vehicle, blank, handheld AR, virtual reality, uh, film and video type projects, um, architecture, Architecture visualization, ArchVis is a uh, pretty big use case. Like pretty much every single building nowadays, especially really big ones in cities, are there's going to be digital replicas of them. Collab viewer, handheld AR. Okay. Uh, this is interesting. They give you different classes here. So for example, the first person shooter kind of default has a actor character game mode. Virtual reality has sound cue, haptic feedback, effect curve, Niagara systems. I don't really know what half of these mean, but teleport locomotion, snap turning, grabbable objects, interactive objects. Okay, why don't we go ahead and finish that. Now let's go back to the tutorial here. All right, so using the Blueprints visual scripting system, you can generate entire games. That's cute. Uh, do we have control? No, we don't. Okay, installing, download, Epic Games Launcher, install engine. Okay, we have that. Engine versions, five, we already have that. Launch, okay, so this is where we're at. Uh, because you're starting from scratch, select the blank template. Okay, so maybe games, blank. Uh, under the settings, Okay, so why don't we try Blueprint? It's probably gonna target platform, desktop, quality preset, maximum. Okay. Selecting mobile or tablet will disable some pros processing. It will also enable using the mouse as a touch input. Set this to desktop. Uncheck the starter project to create. Okay, so this will create simple placeable meshes, basic materials and textures. We're not gonna want that. We just want a clean project. And then ray tracing, uh, real-time subtle lighting, lighting. We're gonna go ahead and uh, not put that in there.
we're going to create a folder in documents and we're going to go ahead and oh this is a text box what are we going to call this this says call it submarine okay uh, and then hit create Oh, error feature pack virtual reality BP oh we actually wants us to download those graphics drivers but we're gonna say fuck no to that So it's doing some stuff here. 20,000 objects. The hell is that? Using simply gone mesh reduction for automatic skeletal mesh reduction. Display. Using, oh, look at that. There's Python in Unreal Engine. Let's see. Huh. That's super interesting. You can use Python to script uh, things within the Unreal Engine. I wonder Unreal Engine, Unreal Editor, Python and API. Import Unreal, get editor subsystem, join static mesh. Okay, so you can do a bunch of different Python things here. API reference, Unreal Editor, Python API reference that we have. Uh, object iterators, what else do we have here? Text, set. We have some mappings, we have arrays. Okay, we have different struct here animation stuff okay so basically it's like nodes so what I'm guessing is that this Python API is actually just really the blueprint API it's basically do you want to use the blueprint node editors or do you want to use the uh, you can use it in Python you can write it in Python but your underlying thing is the same okay so now we finally have our Unreal Engine here. Let's go back to the tutorial. Okay, so once you have created, the editor opens. If you've worked with Unreal Engine 4, we have not, you'll see the new editor view has streamlined control and sidebars. Okay, yeah, I can see these little sidebars here. We have a direction, <laughs> directional light. Could probably move this up and down. We have exponential height fog. It's probably, oh, we can make that fog go up and down. Sky atmosphere, skylight landscape right partition minimap okay different objects here this is the outliner uh, when you click on these different objects within the world you can see down here all these different properties of this object for example this directional light has some location you can change it so that it's static. A static light can't be changed in game. It's fully baked. That's the fastest. So what baked means when you're talking about lighting is that calculating uh, the way a light interacts with objects in the scene is actually quite expensive, 
right? You're basically projecting uh, forward. Um, you're projecting forward the lights and then calculating how they bounce off the different objects. And then from that, you know whether to make textures either brighter or darker. And that's how you get that, these kind of shadow effects here. But doing that, every single frame of a simulation is consumes a lot of processing power. And you use a lot of, a lot of your limited uh, processing for this. Hey, I need help with render. Oh, wow. Hello. What do you mean by render? Um, so whenever you bake these lights, what you can do is basically calculate all of that beforehand and then it's fixed and you don't have to worry about it. Okay, viewport. So one right here, let's zoom in a little bit here. One is the viewport. So that's this right here. Uh, view of your level, look around by holding right click and moving your mouse. Okay, so we're gonna right click. Yeah, this is, this holds the position constant, but it allows you to change the yaw, the pitch, and then probably not the roll. Oh, to move, right click and use the WSAD keys. Okay, so we're, this is a big landscape, so we're moving quite slowly here. This panel lets you modes. This panel lets you select between tools such as the landscape tool and the foliage tool. So this is number two up here. Okay, selection mode, landscape, foliage, activate landscape mode, activate foliage mode, and these are different brushes and, and things you can use here. Let's go ahead and move this a little bit more this way. There's really not a great amount of screen here. I think we're gonna have to get better at using the screen. Erase, reapply, there's a mesh paint mode, a modeling mode, animation mode, create tweens, snap objects, poses. Let's go back to selection mode, the basic mode. Uh, the place tool is the default tool. So if you go into landscape, there's manage, sculpt. Where's the place tool? Let's go to foliage, paint, lasso, erase, single. Okay. Drop foliage here. Let's go back to selection. World outliner. Displays all the objects in the current level. You can organize the list by putting related items into folders and you can search and filter by type. Okay, world outliner three. Three is up here, outliner. Yep, okay, this, we already got that. There's also details here, okay. Okay, so you can actually see how you can reorder these different windows. Toolbar contains a variety of information or a function. You'll one you'll use most is play. So five up here, you can hit play. I have a feeling if we try to hit play right now, it's going to explode.
Look at that. We can kind of move with the mouse. All right. And we hit escape and it killed it right there. This panel displays all your project files. Use this to create folders and organize files. Content drawer. Number six down here. Okay, so that's here. And here you can probably see all the uh, files associated with this project, all right? Importing assets, you're going to need a vessel to start exploring. So grab a submarine. Inside the zip file, you'll find a 3D model and textures. Okay, so we don't have a submarine, so Actually, why don't we, I think it's in the download of this, right? Download materials. Okay, I see. Blueprint. Okay, we don't have a 3D model, so what we're going to do here is we're going to, I think, I do have some 3D models on this computer. Let me see if I can find something that we can use here. Uh, I'm doing this on the side screen here, just so you guys don't. Uh, <laughs> asset don't see my entire library, you know. Um, primitives. Uh, let's do assets, downloads, purchases. Uh, Turbo Squid. Let's see if I have interesting ones. Okay, I have a Malibu coconut rum bottle. MTL. Okay. Properties, we're going to copy the path to this. Uh, Import. All right, we're going to open up this Zumo assets. Assets. Lim. We're going to try to get a Okay, so we finally got this bottle here. So click the import button. Using the file browser, find the folder where your submarine materials, FBX and PNG are. Put it inside the models folder. Okay, so we're just importing directly from some other 3D model that I have here. Um, and force all meshes type. Offset, vertex override color, skeletons, right? Build skeletal meshes. Um, 
import textures, advanced file. Let's do import here. Okay. Unable to retrieve payload texture. Close. Okay, so if we go to our content. Were we able to import that? I don't think we were. Ah, okay, here we go. So we have our little bottle. Let's go ahead. Uh, Unreal will give you some options. Change the model's import scale. What happens if we literally, oh, look at that. We have a giant bottle. Okay. This bottle has no texture materials. Uh, do not create material, uncheck import textures. You'll be importing the textures materials separately. Okay, so we do have that. So why don't we get rid of this material? Can we create a new material? A material is an asset which could be applied to a, a book or a material instance. Okay, so yeah, you can create material objects which define kind of the texture and are mapped to the specific mesh, but you can also make an instance of an already existing material. I think what we want is a new material. And we're gonna call this bottle material. Or bottle, new bottle, how about that? Okay, there we go, we have our new bottle material. Uh, now make uh, materials, import five PNG textures into your materials folder. So, oh, Unreal process has crashed, UE submarine. I do not want to be, send and restart. Oh no, guys, this is actually starting to die now. This is no good. What happened? Mount point added, display, flush reason was shut down. Sleep. Okay, don't exactly know what happened there. Clean the shader directory, unable to find inner node. Okay. We're reloading the uh, Unreal Editor here. So it isn't saved until you explicitly do, do so. You have to save the file and then save all. Save often, okay. So it might be the case that when we come back into this, it's not going to be saved, which will kind of suck to be honest. All right, we're waiting for Unreal Engine to open here. Let me take a little sip. Uh, some of the model components, create your first actor. Okay, so the rest of this here is going to be importing materials and then having 
adding these materials to the submarine itself. We're going to create a special type of actor called the blueprint, which can combine the mesh components into a signal object that is used in the game. Okay. Okay, so blueprints, this is kind of the idea of uh, tying a piece of code or some kind of scriptable behavior with a 3D object in the game, right? And this is also a concept that exists in Unity. So let's do a save project. Is there a save project? Open project? Open, save current level, save all. Why is this called untitled? File, save current level. File, save all. Does this, does this open up a new screen somewhere? Maybe. Let's see here, we weren't able to get, yeah, okay, so it didn't save any of the stuff. So why don't we actually go ahead and create the folders that they wanted to here. They wanted to create, um, what do they call them? A models and materials. Okay. Models. What is the new folder shortcut? I guess we'll never know. And then they also created a new a new folder here. Hmm. New folder called temp content. And there they put that kind of at the highest level there okay actually I kind of prefer the name just TMP I'm gonna call it something like that so let's go ahead and try to re-import the uh, assets that we had so uh, let me refine it on my computer here Okay, wait up, I have a cool texture here that might work, or a cool, let's see if we can open a GLTF file. Let's try to import, see if that works. Importing. Huh, look at that, it worked for all of them, okay, so this time what I imported was uh, a 3D model of a Raspberry Pi and it got put all into here. Look at all these little solder spikes. Okay, so actually see this little star here? I think this is what they mean by save and then save all. So why don't we go ahead and do file, save all. Okay, so now it's going to save all these assets that we imported this Raspberry Pi model directly into this project, which is good because I think if, if this quits again, if this uh, if Unreal Engine just crashes again, because we're here on Linux, then we'll be able to reopen it and it'll be fine. All right, this is actually taking quite some time to save here, guys. This is 
a little intense. Saving, saving, logo the internet, Raspberry Pi. This is a, this is what the 3D model is. It's one of these Raspberry Pis. Um, okay, so let's actually go ahead and, I don't know, what do you guys wanna drag out here? We have the materials, we have the capacitors, capacitors. Is there kind of a cooler looking component here? Logo. Let's just drag out this uh, USB piece here. Is there a way to focus? So Unreal Engine, focus on object. Uh, hit F, okay, let's see. So, We want to focus on this, the little USB. Let's hit F. Oh, there you go. Look at that. Okay, so this is this little component, one of these little USB uh, module or little USB ports on a Raspberry Pi. So let's go back to here. Okay. Why don't we actually hit save all this is control shift s so i'm going to start control shift sing oh, save level as uh let's make a new folder levels we'll call this level or base level. I don't know if snake case is snake case or camel case or what the kind of convention is in Unreal Engine. Unreal Engine, snake case, camel case scenes. Uh, coding standard. Uh, US English spelling, first letter of each word, no underscore, okay. So U primitive component, but not lowercase last mouse coordinates. Type names are prefixed with an additional uppercase letter. Okay, so kind of the C++ uh, formatting style there. Okay, now make a folder in your content drawer called materials, put all the materials in there. I think we already messed up because our materials are here. So really what we would wanna do is, let's make this a little bit bigger, is take these materials like this and then drag them into the materials folder, move here. Right, so you see this as a material here and let's move our little USB piece into there, move here. Okay, actually, let's see, did that impact this? I wonder if that destroyed the reference to this object we have here, two times USB. Um, No, yeah, this is in engine content types. Okay. Okay, so a blueprint represents a thing, custom behaviors for your objects. Again, it's kind of like attaching a script to an object. Flying pigs. Cool, cool. Okay, so create a folder called blueprints in your content drawer. Okay. So in this content, we're gonna make a new folder. We're gonna call it Blueprints. All right, next right click in your Blueprints folder and then create a Blueprint class. 
Blueprints are special assets that provide intuitive node-based interface that can be used to quickly create new types of actors and script level agents, giving designers and gameplay programmers the tools to quickly create and integrate gameplay from within Unreal Editor without ever needing to write a line of code. Awesome. Okay, an actor is an object uh, that can be placed. A pawn is an actor that can be possessed and receive input from a controller. Okay, character is a type of pawn that includes the ability to walk around. Player controller, different types of kind of default classes. And you have a lot of different ones here. Oh, look at this, pi test object, pi test child object. Touch interface, okay. Um, which one do they want us to do here? Make an actor, so we want an actor. And we're gonna call this USB. All right, we're just gonna call it USB. Now double click to open the editor for the blueprint actor. It's time to build your submarine model. Okay, we're gonna double click it. And this opened up a separate window here. Okay, and this is the USB blueprint editor, right? And you can probably control shift S again, or just control S. Components, contains a list of current components. Where is that? You forgot to label the parts here, but let's see if we can discover where these are. Okay, so components is up here. We want to make this bigger. Yeah, there you go. List of the current components. So all we have is USB and then the root scene. Two, my blueprint, this section over here. This section is where you're going to manage your graphs, functions, and variables. Okay, so our graph is not editable. We have different uh, event types, I suppose, on this graph different functions available, potentially macros. Um, this is where the magic happens. All your nodes and logic go here. So in the event graph, where is the event graph? Oh, here it is. All right, here we go. This node is disabled and will not be called. Drag off pins to build functionality. Okay, so we're right clicking to kind of drag around. We have a couple different things here. Event begin play. Event when play begins for this actor. Exec other actor. Event when this actor overlaps another actor. Okay, so a player walking into a trigger or someone hitting a wall. And then event frame. So, okay, so you have this script, this actor or script, which is attached to the USB object. Um, right, our little USB object. We can have it do different things. We can have uh, an event that basically happens the, like anytime, as soon as the object is created or the scene is initialized, you can say, here's an event that will only happen when some specific actor here touches it. I don't know exactly, like I'm assuming you're gonna have to define what the collision meshes are for these different actors. And then you have one where every single frame, maybe with X amount of seconds. Actually, that's interesting. It's not defined by, okay, so, you, okay, yeah. You can call it every frame, but they also have a seconds here. So maybe X every, certain amount of seconds in simulation time, you can also do this. Okay. Uh, event graph, zoom by scrolling your mouse wheel, right click and moving, okay. Any component that have a visual element will appear here, the viewport, uh, this right here. Move and look around using the same controls as the viewport in your main editor, okay. Yeah. Details, this will display the details of a selected object. So that's here. So 
we select this, the USB, here's all the details. Tick interval, start with tick, uh, generate overlap events in the case of collisions. Huh, can take damage. All right, so there's kind of like a built-in uh, health system to individual objects. Input, world partition. You can have different events here on take damage, on destroyed, on hit. What is cooking? Editor only actor. Cook additional data to speed up spawn events. Okay, so basically kind of a way of compiling this the, the stuff in this event graph probably in order to uh, have it run faster at uh, game time. Okay, details, selected item. Submarine model can be assembled using components. Okay, cool. What is a component? Component, if you're writing a blueprint, it would describe the components that make up the vessel, the body, the windows, the periscope, and the propeller. These are all examples of blueprint components. Before you see any components, switch to the viewport view if you're not already there. Click the viewport tab, okay. These are the components here. The default scene root is the topmost member of the model. It will only show in the editor. So why don't we, does F work in here too? Yeah, it does, okay, nice. So we can hit F to see the, uh, to center on that object. Ah, uh, okay. So you can drag the objects into that. Yeah, so let's go ahead and drag this USB there and then they have a couple different objects so we'll drag the second USB there. So we have two different little USB let's see if we hit F here yeah so they're, they're both kind of on top of each other here I think they're actually up there Okay. Uh, choose compile and save in the blueprint editor. Always do those steps after updating a blueprint to be able to see how the changes affect the game. Dirty, needs to be compiled. Okay. Good to go, compiled. And then also hit save. Okay. Make sure to hit save and compile. If you look closely, it's a checkerboard. Okay, yeah, there's no material. I think this doesn't have a, oh, it does have a material. It's this aluminum material. Okay, colors, there's different. So, right, assets or 3D objects in virtual worlds are basically the way these objects are rendered and, and the properties of these objects come down to two basic things. There's a mesh, which is a bunch of 3D positions in space and then known as vertices and then the lines and kind of faces that connect them, right? So uh, if you see here, for example, you can see the little triangles that make up this object. And then objects also will have something called a material, right? And the material is defines what the appearance of this object is. So these materials have, there's a lot of different parameters for those materials, but some of the basic things are the base color, which is the color of this. Actually, we can probably look at the material here and see all these properties. So um, maybe browse. Mm, I wish they could tell you more about it, but uh, metallic, how metal. So you can actually see that our little aluminum certain material here, it's actually quite metallic. It's reflecting some of this light specular shininess roughness uh that gives it more of a, a a matte kind of look 
So again, they show here how changing these can change the appearance of the material. Choose the submarine blueprint and return to the content drawer. Okay, so we're gonna to return to the content drawer and we're going to go to the materials and then we're gonna click this green add button. Uh, and let's create a material here. And we're gonna call this USB material. And we're gonna double click on it to open it in this material editor also a kind of node graph based system here. Uh, different parts here, again, we have a viewport here where you can see the material kind of in a, in a real world situation, right? And we can see how the, these different properties are gonna change it. Any node that you select will have its properties displayed here in two. So this is the same details tab. Now it's moved here to the side and you'll be able to, to see the different properties of this material. Okay. Material graph, this panel will contain all the nodes and the result nodes, so number three, material graph, okay. This is all the nodes in this material. Uh, pan by holding right click and moving your mouse, scroll by scrolling. Palette number four, where is four? One, two, three. A list of all the nodes available. Okay, so we don't, I don't know where the palette is. It's not clear. What is a node? Before you start making your material, you'll need to know about the graphs nodes and pins. Nodes made up of the majority of a material. Many nodes are available and offer different functionalities. Okay. Nodes can have inputs and outputs, also called pins, represented by a circle with an arrow. Okay. So you can have nodes and you connect them. So multiply and constant. So let's say you had a constant node here with a yellow color, a texture node that kind of has darker and lighter parts of it, right? And then you're saying, I wanna connect this white component, the white component of this texture to this yellow constant, right? And because you're multiplying it, right? It's gonna be one and zero, right? that's generally white and black you can just say let's say black is zero or black is one white is zero so whenever you have uh zero times whatever this number here is one comma zero point nine four five comma zero it's just going to zero out and then become black and whenever it's white which is i'm guessing one here right it'll just give you that same color zero because you're multiplying by one To add color in detail, you need a texture. Typically it's projected. Materials have a special node called a result node, which has already been created for you. This is where all the nodes were end. Okay, so this is the final material that we need and we need to plug in different things. So why don't we create a texture coordinate text sample texture sample node okay actually we're just going to delete that one because you need an actual texture to do that let's try to do a a noise node position uh, let's delete that let's uh, snow noise vector noise is that what we want no it's more crap 
base color, the normal map, ambient occlusion. Open the content drawer, drag each of the five textures into the graph from the materials folder. Okay, so do we actually have any textures here? Can we search by the type? Oh, yeah, look at that. Okay, so this is the texture PCB top base, so the texture of the Raspberry Pi. Let's, seems like we can just drag it in here. Okay. Um, and we wanna connect the RGB to the base color. There we go, look at that. So this 2D texture of the Raspberry Pi is now determining the base color. Um, cool, all five textures. So here they have different textures for each of the different parts of this, but we can actually, let's see if we do constant, let's do a constant double. If we plug this into metallic, right, how do, you, how do we think this is gonna change? Right, so as we do, as we make this more and more metallic, right, you can see how much more shiny it becomes. Right, so if we say 0 0.1, what if we change this to roughness? Yeah, there you go, look how much more shiny that is. What is 10? See, this is the kind of uh, matte look, that roughness. So if you if you have a high roughness, it's it's gonna look like it's it's not reflective, right? So let's go back and make this shiny. Click apply and save in the toolbar to close the material editor. Apply and then let's hit save. And then let's close that using materials. All right, so to use your material with a submarine, assign it. So return to the content drawer and double click on the submarine blueprint to open it. Close the viewport tab and zoom out to see the whole submarine. Okay, we're there. Select all five of the models. Okay, so we're gonna control to select multiple. All right, so we're selecting both of our little USBs and click the drop down on the right of element zero and select our new material that we made, USB material. Okay, compile and save your blueprint. So compile and save. Okay. Adding logic to a blueprint. To explore the depths of Unreal, we need to learn a bit more about blueprints. Uh, scripting in blueprints works via a node based system. Uh, also supports writing logic using CPP, but I remember you start with a blueprint. Quicker develop using blueprints than CPP. Easy organization. Working with non programmers, modifying the blueprint is easy. Uh, good approach is to create your object using Blueprint and then convert them to CPP as you require performance. Okay, let's get this moving. All right, we are going to go ahead and take a quick break here.
All right, we're back. Okay. Blueprint nodes have special pins, so this is the event graph of the actual stuff here. Okay. If a node has an input pin, it must be a, have a connection before it can execute. If a node is not connected, any subsequent nodes will not execute. Okay. Node A and node B will execute because their input pins have a connection. Node C will never execute because node C input pin does not have a connection. Okay, so you have your entry nodes. These are the different entry nodes here. And in this case, A and B, right, the entry condition will trigger node A, which will then trigger node B. Node C and node D will never execute because there's nothing coming into node C, right? You would have to connect this entry node to node C. All right, open the submarine blueprint. So, right, it looks like they're, they're not doing it for the individual components here. They're doing it for the entire thing. And then switch to the event graph. Make an object rotated so simple you only create one node. Right click a space on the graph to bring up the menu of available nodes. Search for add local rotation. Okay, so we're going to search for add local rotation. And they actually give us the option here of do we want it for the USB 3.0 or the USB 2.0? Let's do it for the USB 3.0. Okay, so we have our little node thing here. And here we can see that this is like basically some object node and it's going into the target. And we need the execution. So we're going to have to probably pick one of these three executions. Okay, target input. Go to the delta rotation and change the y value to 2.0. Okay, so this, by changing that to 2.0, I assume that's how much it'll rotate. Is this in radians or in degrees? Okay. Higher values will rotate the propeller faster. To constantly rotate the turntable, we'll add local rotation every frame. Okay, use the event tick. So this is the one that we want. So event tick is going to, I think we hit the pin. Okay, put it there. And again, called every frame. So we'll call this rotation node on the USB 3.0 object every frame. In this implementation, the rotate rate is dependent on the frame rate. That's fine for this tutorial. Hit compile and save. And then close the blueprint editor. Okay, so now that we've done this, we can close out of this. Let's actually delete the one that we already have in here. Okay. Bring the actor into the scene. Adding the blueprint from the content drawer, drag the submarine blueprint. Okay, so this is a little bit of a difference from what you have in Unity. In Unity, the object has a script attached to it, but in this, the, the, the object is kind of, or the blueprint is the master object, right? Like the, the blueprint has the stuff, or the blueprint is the master object. The meshes are just children of that blueprint object. Okay, we're dragging it on there. Uh, objects in a level can move, rotate, and scale. Okay, so we can Okay, so you see how that's changing the, uh, when we hit W, we can move them. When we hit 
E, we can uh, rotate, and we hit R, we can scale. So we can make them a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller, and so on. Just add water. Okay, first select volumetric cloud in the outliner. Post process effect of the code world. Okay, I'm a little scared about this because I think this might explode my computer, but let's see. So, in the outliner, outliner, we want to select volumetric cloud and delete this. Okay, so volumetric cloud, if we actually hit F, it's a little object in the center of the world here. We're going to delete it, get rid of that. Um, uh, quick add volumes, post process volume. Quick add button in the toolbar. Quick add volumes, post process volume. This creates a box. If the camera is inside its extent, you will have to post process effect applied. Okay, so if our camera is within this box, we will see that effect. So this is just a tiny little box right now, so we need to make it bigger. So they're saying in the outliner tree, make sure then look at the details. Make sure the load box is positioned at the origin and covers the view by setting the transform. So let's look at the general. Actor, miscellaneous, streaming, all. Transform, here we go. So let's put this in the center here. Zero, 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 center of the world. And they're saying make it 50 by 50 by 50. 50 by 50 by 50. So now if we go here, let's go back to our post-process volume, hit F. There we go, that's a pretty nice big square of this post-processing volume. Let's actually figure out where our little USB is. Okay, our USB is not even in there. So let's go ahead and put that inside the world here. It's really hard, like it's, you keep, I keep clicking on, okay, so actually we can see that the USB is outside of this. This is really big. Let's make this a little bit smaller, 0 0.1, like 10 times smaller, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, I'm dropping my pen. Okay. So now our post-process volume is this big square here and our little USB actor. Oh, damn, like this hitting that is so easy to do is F, here we go. And our little USB is inside the post-process volume. Uh, why don't we hit our control S to save. Control shift S to save all. Uh, Okay, to change how the world appears, find the section called color grading and set the both global contrast and gamma to a bluish value. Okay, so let's go to post process, uh, general, all, and we're looking for global. And inside global, we're gonna set the contrast and they're saying set it to something blue, okay? And then we're also gonna set the gamma to something blue. And that gives it the underwater effect. Okay, it's kinda cool. Navigate to the toolbar and hit play to see the submarine action in its natural habitat. All right, we're gonna control S, control shift S, and then we're gonna hit play. 
<laughs> All right, and there you go. And obviously we didn't have the submarine model, so this makes zero sense. You, we just have one USB component rotating relative to the center of its world, and then another USB component there. But I think we learned a bunch of different things. So where to go from here? Uh, just a fraction of Unreal. Check out the Unreal Engine Blueprints tutorial and learn more about building logic with Blueprint Screening. Awesome, thank you, Matt uh, Larson, uh, who wrote this tutorial for Unreal Engine 5. And I, uh, I will be doing more exploration of Unreal Engine 5 here. I'm ultimately building towards uh, using it for VR applications and specifically mixed reality stuff. So look forward to that. Thanks for listening and see you guys later.